Greetings, YouTube. Danny Staten here on the Daily Dan Blog. You know I love saying that. Today we're taking a look at War of the Undead by Brian Johnson and Walter Flanagan. It's the number one from 2007, and I think this book's going to be a real treat. Got to give credit where credit's due. That is one cool cover. And we're going to see Adolf Hitler rise, raise some undeads to fight the Allies back in the World War II, I think. So that's going to be a rare treat. And plus, stick around at the end of this video. The last few pages of this book has something special, especially if you're a Star Trek fan. So this ought to be good. So in the inside cover of this comic book, you see the people you need to blame if you find it offensive, disturbing, or whatever. Eh, I like the inside cover of this book, and you can see a number one from 2007. In the very first page, we see our hero, Adolf Hitler. What? Our hero? Nah, he ain't our hero, is he? And a swastika. So you know this book's headed for some stuff. When you see a swastika and Adolf Hitler's face on the front page, you know this book's going to go some places, right? So to get things started, in full panels brought to you by the Daily Dan Blog, you see the inside cover, the very first turn of the page, the War of the Undead intro, with a monk, well, a god darn gorilla, he got a Nazi swastika and a robot brain, you know this is great, huh, and you get that guy, what, what he from Hellboy, that guy from Hellboy, you know the one with the sword and thing, and then you get Robbie the Robot, he's done flipped over to the dark side, yep it's true, and you see some zombies being rose by the Nazis. So in full glossy ass shiny panels brought to you by the Daily Dan blog, we get things started. We see the Russians rolling into Berlin. We see the Russians destroying and trashing the city. God darn, this video, this, this comic book could be taking place yesterday somewhere in the Ukraine, could it? Oh, did I say that? Ugh, them damn Russians, they always tearing up and trashing something as they move through Berlin, killing the citizens, destroying everything in their path, looking like, I won't want to be here because I'm Russian. But you know they do. Look, this could be happening in Ukraine right now. I bet some Russians over there are doing the same thing. Thing. And Adolf Hitler's upset that the Russians are breaking through the lines. They're headed for the bunker. So Adolf Hitler is going to break out his occult powers on him. And, and he's going to summon up what? The undead? So, I, I swear I think whoever wrote this book must have been like a really big Batman 70s TV show fan. That's right. Hitler then called up his version of Bat Nazi. Bat Nazi turns the little head on the Fuhrer, on the Fuhrer statue bag, pushes a button. Secret panels roll up, and he whoops out the scroll. And he takes the scroll down to the master. And the master gonna use the scroll to call up the undead. And of course, it's gonna be the Bat Hitler with a flaming lightsaber. Oh my God, whoever wrote this book had to be on some weird ass acid, did they not? So the war rolls on through the streets of Berlin. The Nazis are in their last bit of desperation, break out the scroll of evil, and raise the undead. They raise up some zombies. That's right, YouTube. They're going to call up some undead zombies with a bag of zombie dust. I don't know. And these undead zombies are going to fight the allies for them. And these, these zombies are cool because they can... Talk? What What the hell? That's right, oh, Adolf Hitler's generals, they pulling out all the stops. They done jumped in their UFO and flew down to, flew down to ancient Egypt to whoop up the mummy. That's right, they're going to bring up the mummy. They're going to activate the mummy's necklace, the curse of Isis or something, and they're going to bring the mummy back in all his glorious, what the freak? They're going to bring the mummy back? They gotta bring the mummy back, but really all they want is that ISIS thing, cause that's the totem of power that controls the undead. Oh my God, who wrote this? And they're gonna use the mummy's totem of power thing that brought the mummy back to raise some more undead to fight the allies. So in full Mandela Effect alternate universe, the Nazis have brought back the undead. They brought back zombies. They went over and, and they're flying around in their little was that a YouTube spot? That's, 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 what's the name of that damn plane? I can't remember the name of that thing. 
I had to look it up. It's the flying wing. The, the, the Nazis invented back in the day. You know, we ripped it off and called it the stealth. Anyway, they're flying around and they're bringing back zombies. They're bringing back the mummy. They're going to use all these undead creatures to fight the allies in the last days of World War II. And oh my God. God, what a comic book. I bet my friend the captain really would like this one. I ought to trade it to him. So in a full page centerfold in the middle of this comic book, they break out the big battle and unleash the undead in this shiny ass glossy panel. And, and the undead's battling the allies, ripping off heads and biting out necks. Oh my God, what gore. But you know... Really? That's not going to be enough to beat the Allies. You know what they're going to need to do? They're going to need to call up their special forces. And what's that? Vampires! Because vampires teaming with the mummy and the undead zombies to fight the Allies will be just the thing to do, right? Uh, oh my god, we got vampires, zombies, and mummies. I can't imagine what would be next. We got vampires, zombies, and mummies ready up from the undead to fight the allies. My God, what a comic book. Will they be an issue too of this? I doubt it. You know, it really plagues Daily Dan. It plagues me a lot with these shiny ass pages. But what really plagues me is when you got a great amount of art. I mean, some really well drawn comics. This is some of the best drawn stuff I've ever seen. To have such a crappy, shitty story as the mummy heads forth to trash the allies. Now they found a tomb of who the hell knows what dead thing this is they're going to try to raise. Let's see. What, a werewolf? Oh, let's say they're going to try to raise the body of the werewolf. I bet it turns out to be Lion Shaney Jr. Uh, these Nazis, they never stop, as they say, how Hitler. And try to raise the, the werewolf. And that guy from Hellboy showed up again. He's pretty prevalent in this. But check out the art. And notice how well they did the uniform and everything looks so realistically good. I think they did a great job on art in this comic book. Anyway, oh Hellboy guy. He's, he's shooting some people in the head for not doing the job right as he tries to get this damn werewolf to come to life. And I swear to God, YouTube, that is the end of the freaking story. What this be to be the shortest damn comic book that ever freaking existed? Straight stories and no commercials, by the way. As you see, the werewolf being brought back to life to be continued. And then, and then you get this Transformers movie thing and that's really funny because you know this is 2007 and a lot of stuff's come out since then this makes me think of my friend Transformers Earth Wars guy you know I hadn't heard from him in a long time I hope he survived the pandemic that dude was cool and I miss him a lot anyway you get this little teaser for some Star Trek stuff right here that's coming out and this is before the next generation comics ever come out and we carry on to the next to the last pages as more Transformers crap is discussed in this comic book. And then you get some Desperados Buffalo Dreams bullshit. I don't know. I never even heard of this cowboy crap. I wonder how well that did in the world in January of 2007. You know, if I ever see a copy of this crap, I'll pick it up just to see what it was about. And you get this really cool teaser. And this was the one that got me all excited. Look at them big ears on Captain Picard. You get a teaser, a few pages of the upcoming Star Trek, the next generation comic book series from 2007. I bet the op hit people just couldn't wait to see this. See old Picard roll down, through, uh, roll down the halls of the Enterprise. You see Picard talking to the big neck geek people on this planet. Who do they want to join the Federation? So in full panels brought to you by the Dada Dan blog, I give you a sneak peek at the worst goddamn Picard art ever. And, and then know this is some old shit when Tasha Yar's beaming down with Rocker and Data. And I can't believe they made Rocker look like this. Rocker looked like a goof in this comic book. As they beam down to meet the incredibly long necked people. Uh, try to get them in the Federation. Do anybody remember this crap from the actual TV series? That's right. If you remember any of this garbage from the... Star Trek The Next Generation TV series. Be sure to let me know in the comments below because I don't remember this episode, you know, where, where they beamed down and talked to some elong, elongated neck people about joining the Federation. Yeah, that's some bull right there, ain't it? And, and once again, may I point out this. The worst image of Rocker I've ever seen. 
Ah, I bet you a dollar a damn picture of Star Trek shows up in the thumbnail and messes everybody up instead of that cool comic book cover. What you want to bet? Hang hey, YouTube, that's it for Star Trek. That's all they're going to give you on that one. Hey, guess what? In the future, I will take you down the road and show you some Star Trek, the next generation comic books. Because I have quite a few of them bad boys. I really do. And after the Star Trek stuff, you get this, this advertisement for Doomed. And I'll tell you, I have no clue what Doomed is. If I ever see that comic book, I'll probably check it out for you, too. I don't even know what the hell Stormbringers is, neither from 2007. But it's got some pretty damn good art in it, apparently. I'm going to have to check out that Stormbringers comic book right there if I ever see it. I wish this damn shit wouldn't glass and glow and glow like this, though. I hate these glossy-ass comic books. I like the old ones from back in the day. And on the back, you get this promo for The Aryan Adventure. It says D Airman, the Aryan Adventure. I'm beginning to think this comic book might just be a little bit Nazi orientated. You let me know in the comments below what you thought about this one, guys and gals. So that's my look, YouTube. That's my look at War of the Undead, 2007. It's the number one. I love the art in this comic book. I think it's one of the best draw comic books I've ever seen with one of the coolest covers. But the story. The alternate earth where Nazis are bringing up vampires, werewolves, and zombies and shit to fight the allies. I think that's the crappiest story I've ever seen in my life. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Be sure to join me for my next comic book adventure. And until next time, this is Danny Staten on the Daddy Dan Blog. Blog over, dudes. Blog over.